Hey guys, this is Pastor Andy with the Beat Church, and we're on day like a bazillion of Flatten the Fear as we continue to work our way through uh, this kind of season of just chaos and just uh, constant change. It sounds like today, it's Monday, and they're opening up the parks and the trails for social distance walking adventures. So if you like to walk and be close with people, you may not quite be ready for that yet, but if you want to get outdoors and walk around with some friends and According to what the guidelines are, keep some distance and walk around. Sounds like it's a go, so check your local guidelines, I guess. But you can be outside a little bit. That's awesome. And I believe you have to wear a face mask, and it's supposed to be pretty hot, I think. So uh, you might want to get out earlier than later, or really late, but not in the middle of the day, because it's going to be hot, and that face mask will sweat you out. So it always is changing. Wow, totally insane. But one thing I noticed in the news over the weekend is... This, protesting. Protesting is starting to spring up, or even you could say erupt, all over the country. States, I think there is uh, 22 at last count, states that have protests going on, or have had protests, or have a protest planned at their capital to get freedom back and reopen America. I don't know where you stand on that, but that is the debate now. And in fact, this sign is what actually caught my attention, is this sign is pretty popular at these different rallies, and that is a sign that says, freedom is essential. Is it? Is freedom essential? Is it essential to be alive? What exactly is it essential to? And a better question is, as people of faith, is freedom essential to live. Can you be a believer and not have freedom? Can you be a person and not have freedom? Well, they're two different things. You can live in a country without freedom and you can physically be alive. So freedom is a beautiful, wonderful way to live. Is it essential to be alive? Well, factually, no. You can actually live without freedom. It's not the same life. It's not an exciting life. It's not the life that we want. But it can be done. It's been done throughout human history. What about spiritual freedom? Can you be alive spiritually? Have faith? Be a follower of Jesus? And not have freedom? I mean, the Bible tells us that it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. And so, wouldn't that mean that if you are a believer, if you're a follower of Christ, if you're a Christian, that freedom is an essential ingredient and component to that life? That you really couldn't be a Christian without freedom. Because it is essential. It is the work of Christ. He died to set us free. Hmm. That's what it would seem like, but I will say this, the Bible actually deals with this directly. But before we get there, let me ask you this. Are you living free? I'm not talking about the freedom that comes from governments. Whether you can go outside or have to stay inside. What I'm specifically talking about is are you living free inside. Is there anything that is in control of you? Are you controlled by fear? Are you controlled by anxiety? Are you controlled by anger or bitterness? Are you controlled by impulses and addictions? Are you controlled by covetousness, a desire to have things that other people have. Hmm. Are you living free? On the inside. Are you being controlled by your past? Bound up, locked away, enslaved by past mistakes, regrets, shame? Are you being controlled by your future? have you locked down 
worried, afraid, nervous, scared? Are you controlled by other people's opinions and thoughts of you? Do they accept you? Do they like your ideas? Do they think you look nice? Do they want to be your friend? Do they like your posts? Do they like everyone else's posts but yours? When you like their posts, do they like your like? We can get caught up in an endless cycle with things to be controlled by, bound by, and enslaved by on the inside. So while many in the world are worried about outside control, outside bondage, outside freedom, and whether or not that is essential, as believers, we can actually look even at the deeper question. Is freedom on the inside essential to be alive and to be a believer? Or can we actually be alive and be a believer without freedom? Well, the answer is dealt with directly in the Bible. Let's get to that. So here it is. This is Galatians 5.1. It says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Well, there's a verse I mentioned earlier. But that's only part of it. Oftentimes, people read the Bible and they only look at part of a verse. They'll build an entire life off of part of a verse. They'll write a whole book, a DVD series. They'll get a whole speaking circuit going on, a part of a book. Well, you'd never want to build a house on part of a foundation, would you? If you're out there amongst the virus, you wouldn't really want to wear part of a mask, would you? The whole thing is usually pretty important. Unless it's cupcake. If it's cupcake, I throw the bottom away and I just eat the top with all the frosting. So there are exceptions, but typically... The whole is there for a reason, and it's important. So let's read the rest of the verse. It says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore. Who? Well, whoever's reading this. Christ has set you free. Now stand firm. Why? Stand firm for what? what what's happening? What's going on? What, what's my part? Christ set me free, and I'm, now I'm supposed to stand firm? Like, he did something, and now I'm supposed to do something? Yeah, that's exactly what it's saying. He did something. Now you have to do something. I have to do something. We have to do something after he set us free. Well, what do we have to do? Well, let's keep reading. And do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. I'm going to read the whole thing at once, just for flow. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. In other words, what this verse is telling us is that Jesus died to set us free from all the laws and regulations of sin. In fact, the Bible tells us he gives us a new heart, a new spirit, so that we long to and love to do God's will. But this verse tells us that if we don't stand firm in our freedom, that we can actually subject ourselves back into slavery, to be controlled by fleshly laws and by sin. Well, one of the first things that sin brought, believe it or not, was fear. Adam and Eve, the Bible says, ate of the fruit that God told them not to. They looked around, they realized that they were naked, they were ashamed, they were afraid. They realized they had broken God's command and they ran and hid in the bushes for fear that God was going to kill them. See, the first thing that sin brings is Fear. It brings an awareness of what we lack and our inability to protect ourselves and stay safe. Shame and fear flood in and we run to hide. Now, many people hide in different things. They 
hide in anxiety, fear, pride, anger, addiction. There's all types of places that we can hide. Partying, fun, zoning out on TVs. There's all kinds of hiding spaces. I remember going to a hermit crab race once. And they had these little tiny hermit crabs with the little shell backs. And you paint the backs different colors. And they put them in the middle of this giant parquet floor. And then they ring the bell. They took the box off. And they let the little hermit crabs crawl out to the edge. Whichever color made it to the end first wins. Well, here's the thing. Every shell looked different. And when it was time to hide, the hermit crab crawled up in his shell. The shells look different, but they were really the same. Well, we can all hide in fear, in shame, in insecurity. There's all different ways to hide, whether that is in our television, in a bottle, in isolation and anger. But all of those places to hide really are the same. They're rooted in a bondage of fear of dealing with what's around us. And this verse tells us that Christ has set us free from that, but it is up to us now to stand firm to stay free. Well, how do we do that? We do that by continually putting into our hearts the word of God. And then standing firm upon his promises. We put in our heart that God is for us, not against us. We put in our heart, do not worry. Because the Bible tells us that. We put in our heart the ways that God wants us to live. And then we line up with that. Saying, I'm going to live this way because that way puts me into bondage and fear. If someone else rejects us or tries to put labels on us and tries to discourage us, tries to control us, I don't have to be controlled by that. I've been set free through the work of Christ, both on the cross and in his resurrection, and after that, even now in heaven. The Bible says he's constantly praying over us to help us, to lift us, to sustain us, interceding for us, because he knows our weaknesses and our struggles. Because when he was here, he suffered in every way just like we did. And he overcame it. And he's with us to overcome it. But it's up to us individually to realize that you know what freedom isn't. From a spiritual sense, essential to be alive or to be a believer. You can be a believer and still be bound. You can be a believer and still submit yourself to different bondages. But it is up to you to stand up in faith and walk in the freedom that Christ has given you. And here's the secret. The only way to do it is to do it. That's what faith is. Faith is action. Faith is stepping forward into what God has called you to. If God's called you not to be afraid, you have to wake up in the morning, read the word, say, man, God wants me to have courage. God wants me to have hope and faith today. I'm going to do it. But I still feel afraid. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do it. God tells me to be joyful. I feel depressed and discouraged. But you know what? I'm not going to fall under that yoke of slavery. I'm going to step out in the freedom that God gave me. And I'm going to smile. I'm going to give an encouraging word to someone. I'm going to live happy. Well, it's not that easy. No. It sure isn't. But it is that simple. Christ has died for our freedom and it's up to us to stand firm and to walk in it and not to subject ourselves again to slavery. And can you do it? Yes, you can. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not only did he set you free, but he comes to strengthen you to walk in that freedom. Let's pray. I'm going to pray that God will visit you in a tangible, real way that you'll understand that he is with you and that he wants to help you to stand up 
to walk firm in your freedom and not to subject yourself to slavery, to anything, internal or external. Because it was for freedom that he set you free. He really wants you to live in the joy of the freedom that he paid for. Father, I pray right now for everyone that's on this video, I ask God that you would fill them up with faith and hope. Lord, whatever would bind them, whatever would put them in bondage, whatever they would be enslaved to, Lord, that you would give them the freedom, revelation. Not the freedom, God, you already gave it to them, but the freedom, revelation. Help them to understand in their mind and in their heart that the freedom has been paid for, that they are free. God, that the door of their jail is already unlocked. Or that the chain around their ankle has already been broken. Father, let them walk in freedom today. Help them to do it in the strength that you provide. Help them to stand firm, to throw off bondage and slavery, and to walk boldly and full of faith full of joy in the freedom that you give. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for being on here with me today. If you felt encouraged from this, and I would ask you to share the video. Share it on your wall. Tweet it out. Text it out. Facebook message it out. Do whatever, but share it and let someone else be encouraged. There's a lot of fear going on out there. A lot of confusion going on out there still. But together, we can make a difference. So jump in, spread the word, help me encourage people. Let's make it.